Hello out there, friends. I hope you're having a marvelous start to this Friday, the 5th of April, 2024. It's 9.47 and I decided to give any of you farming friends out there a live stream update after the bit of drizzle that the Meerkat Magic Valley Reserve, right here in the Meerkat Magic Conservation Project, the ground is lovely and damp and it is the ideal time to get out there and plant some new green babies as I like to call this wildlife-friendly organic farming. I will explain in a bit of detail why that is. What I've got here is unique in this area. It is what I call an eco-wall. I am creating more biodiversity by first increasing the biomass of the soil, which will later become necromass as it dies off. And then, of course, more biodiversity is attracted into the area. None of this was here before. It all looked like that, just barren and dead nothing would grow because this ground is basically as hard as brick concrete after a few centimeters like that it's solid and nothing can chip through it so in order to make this a more viable ecosystem for the surrounding wildlife on the reserve such as porcupine and bear and of course the meerkats and various mongoose species and various rodent species just to name a few very briefly i decided to start planting the equivalent of contour beds and to establish these beds i have been planting these over the last few months and i have decided to use various vegetables such as butternut and red speckled beans whole brown lentils and onions in particular and i will show you some of these as they have different growth stages here every day and every night various reserve nature's tax collectors as i like to call them arrive and start basically grooming the plants and removing any of the coleoptera larva those are beetle grubs that eat the plants roots and those in particular that also come through and eat termites but in specific cases the porcupine and some of the other rodents in this area will come through and help themselves to some of the vegetables. That's why I've planted them at different stages, so that hopefully over time enough of them will survive. But enough about that. What I've done here in the soft soil is I've actually made a little trench. And then I've taken some of the very high nitrogen riverine soil that was brought into this area and put it in the trench first. And then... I will be putting in to give them a head start instead of just using from seed, which I have done, some beautiful allium sepa. I strongly advise you add these to your diet, raw and cooked. It's one of the most powerful foods you can put in your body. It's very high in antioxidants, quercetin, plant phenols, etc. And then, of course, the red speckled beans and whole lentils. Now, of course, I could eat these now because they are perfectly edible and suitable for consumption so i'm not waiting until it's just scraps and then planting whatever survives i've also got some orange peels all of these foods are excellent anti-purine and anti-inflammatory superfoods so then to give you an example take an onion right there another onion i thought i'd do a little point of view butternut seed little sprinkling of the lentils i will show you some of these in a moment how they've already been growing and we have our first button nuts in this area for those who've seen my previous streams coming up now and as we move into the cooler months in the reserve temperatures will start to plummet from over 45 degrees centigrade summers down all the way to minus 10 plus and in fact, the Great Black Mountain Range, which is wreathed in beautiful clouds at the moment, which cannot even be seen, gets covered in snow. So that's what's on the way. Now, as I plant these, I'm giving them a great head start. You can also plant them, it doesn't matter which side, up, root side, or where the inflorescence come up. They will sort themselves out very nicely. Now, I'm going to just pour in some of these. I'm not bothered by planting one at a time. There's enough to go around here, but I'm putting in a lot of vermiculture food. A shout out to my friend there in the military, Winston. 
he told me more about this amazing bit of agricultural knowledge using earthworms to help be what I like to call <laughs> mammal earthworms is when you've got the rodents such as the Rabdomus pamelio, that's the striped mouse in this area digging little holes and aerating the soil just like an earthworm but of course you can also get the real earthworms coming through you can see I'm not being shy oh and look at this right here how incredible on a live stream I didn't expect her to be out that is Gakulu right now I'm just making my usual contact call I'm not surprised because how amazing <laughs> it's what you call a photo bomb equivalent in a selfie but yeah I've got Gakulu from the Tsibokolodi yellow mongooses who's come out now meerkats are very anti cold drizzly weather because they're very dog-like and if they get wet they'll go into a burrow to warm up again but yellow mongooses Cynictus penicillata that you can see right here are very well suited to different weather conditions because they've got fine hair almost like fur covering their bodies even under their feet meerkats have no hair underneath their feet all right so there Gakulu just came along quickly to check and they're busy digging probably some juicy termites that have come out after coleoptera swarms that we've been having recently have made lots of holes and softened the ground the termites have been moving around and having nuptial flights in this drizzly weather going out and establishing new colonies all right and Bakulu's moved on as you can see just briefly she recognizes me there are also two small gray mongooses in this area that have been coming through almost every single day to dig here all right going back to vermiculture and what i was mentioning about my friend winston there this will attract a lot of earthworms by putting in all of this extra goodness into the soil. So let me just throw it out with my advice. Just take a few minutes. Go make a trench in your garden. Go plant some vegetables. You're planting food. And if you don't eat it, certainly nature's tax collectors will come along and make a meal of it over time. All right. Now that I've gone and established this little bio trench, there's another recent one, and then here we can see one planted a few weeks ago. Red speckled beans starting to come out, the butternut over there, lentils, and there we can see larger butternut from a few weeks before that. I've also planted riverine reeds here to establish this area and form a trestle network. I'm thinking of planting some Vitis vinifera grapes. I already have some over there, that section with the vegetables, but by planting them here they can weave their way up through all of these reeds and then create a vast abundance of food for all the different animals in this area who come through to eat the grapes of course all right so here we've got some of these vines creeping up now for those of you who are not familiar with beans jack and the beanstalk a very famous story of course well it's good to have reeds or other growth areas for them to climb up so i've planted these together specifically the beans shelter the lentils under their leaves, almost like big parasols or umbrellas. And you can see there, and then I've got various onions coming up. So I plant little colonies of plants together, which are actually beneficial to have around each other. Here we can see some of the butternut that are starting to stretch out and go in search of new areas. And there we have that beautiful flower. Shout out to my other friend from Klein Karua Yenang, Eugene. Your bee children are in the hotels today. They're not coming out because of the weather. Nobody's drinking. And over here, that's one of the attractants for the bees. Again, this is all organic, wildlife friendly. I do not add toxins and chemicals and nasty things. They're going to kill reserve inhabitants. And of course, I don't put any toxins in the body either. So what you put in, you get out. So... You can see all of these butternut growing beautifully here and for those who saw my previous stream you can see just how well they've all grown since then and you can water these every few days again no extra nutrients or anything needed the soil has everything required and i am simply establishing this ecosystem for future growth of other plant material so these are basically pioneer crops so if you buy butternut 
take out the seeds, go plant them. I plant butternut every few days. So it's not just everything invested in one planting session. As you can see, there are various levels of growth here along these little contours. So because I cannot go down into the ground and plant easily because of the very compacted soil, again, I'm just going upwards, building this. Now, water vapor gets trapped on the reeds, and this also forms a lovely shady area for different parts of the day. I've made it, as you can see here, it's not just a straight line, it's actually curved, almost like a crescent, and that allows the shade to spread in different parts of the soil here and keep it damp. And then the water actually flows downwards like that and gets trapped in all these little gutters. All right, soon I'll be covering up the newest growth, but I wanted to show you the most established butternut here. Oh, beautiful. You can see how the flowers have started to shrivel up and there are all the new babies coming out there. <laughs> Look at that one. Absolutely gorgeous. Organic, as I said before. So some of them are not going to survive. It is a harsh time to be planting when it is getting very cold and we might get frost coming through. But again, as I mentioned, this is not just for my consumption. For any animals that decide to come through and help themselves, it's for them too. All right. So, there are a few other ones that are growing over here. There is one in there, hiding underneath. There we go. Beautiful. And that one there. What lovely gifts. Oh, this is quite a big one coming out here. For those of you who have seen massive vegetables, I advise you ask whether those are organic or genetically modified. Because remember, everything you put in your body adds up over time. So I'd rather be putting in nature's goodness. Right here we've got the Swiss Shard, which is almost as amazingly packed full of nutrients as what many people are familiar with, spinach. However, this is related directly to the beetroot, Beta vulgaris variation vulgaris. And this is Beta vulgaris variation sickly. You can eat, incidentally, not just that beautiful beetroot itself, but also the leaves. Many people throw away the leaves. That's one of the best parts of the beetroot. It amazes me. However, with this variation, Cicla, C-I-C-L-A, the shard, do not try and eat the root system. All right, because it is full of oxalic acid. You can eat these raw. Well, these leaves are perfect, and in fact, I'll be picking quite a few of them. And I'll actually just show you. If you just reach down and snap them off gently at the base, within a few days, New leaves come up. This is beautiful, fresh, fresh, organic, wonderful nutrients that I will be adding into my body later as these go into the pot of food that I'm busy preparing with lentils and butternut and red speckled beans and onion and all sorts of goodies. And of course, the olives, for those of you who have watched my other stream, and videos are ready to be used and of course olives are incredibly potent I'm not talking about sodium soaked toxic olives that many people eat I'm talking about ones that are cured over months using fresh water ah I see a little moisture thief has come in here, as I call them but this is also very toxic this is deadly nightshade and it spreads because of the birds that eat the fruit, even though the seeds are toxic. This is a Solanum species. Yeah, it even has a very powerful smell as a deterrent. It's a warning. Right next to the beans here. So birds have come through. If you can see over here, they've been munching on the various plants, etc. Leaving some lovely compost here behind as their payment for the nature's tax. And then this is a much larger version of the Swiss shard growing so nicely there. I've put up a few reed stands for as the bean grows. Starting to drizzle lightly, so I'll end the stream in a moment. You can see some of these reeds. I established these when there was nothing here, as I mentioned to some who saw the streams before. Yeah, we have what is known locally as a lettuce bush. This is all indigenous reserve riverine vegetation. I also have some succulents that I've established here, 
So there's a whole variety of different wild plants and then vegetable plants as well that I've brought into the area. And then also some pioneer grasses. I've got some Aerogrostis here. I've got some Sitaria verticillata. I've got some Cynodon dactylin. The reason this Sitaria verticillata is so good as a pioneer, it just binds together. It's all sticky because it establishes itself in areas and then gets distributed by animals. Epizucori or external sea dispersal by animals. All right, yeah, see another dig has come through. Some of the lentils have been knocked out of their beds, but it's all right. They're enough to go around for everybody. Lovely, what perfect timing. Here comes the rain, and apparently we are due to get a lot of rainfall over the next few days. Certainly judging by that thick cloud cover in the distance, it looks like that is going to be a true forecast. <sighs> I'll be heading back into the Meerkat Mansion in a moment. I hope you all have a marvelous weekend. And remember, you can make a difference every day. It's a choice. What are you going to put in your book of the day? What interesting message for your future self to read? All right, have a great day. All the very best.